Hello everyone and welcome to the video. Today we're going to be going over Marad Breedstorm real quick. If you're coming here from the article, then uh, welcome. And if you're not, then welcome as well. So uh, we'll make a quick deck tech because um, I already pretty much went over the deck in the article. And uh, if you haven't seen the article, you can probably find it in the description. But um, yeah, I'm just going to go over the deck real quick. And then I'm going to just uh, show what it looks like to combo off. Alright, so the, the basic premises of deck of this deck is you want to get down either a Steamkin or a Bergy to produce mana. Um, potentially a Dragon Raids Channeler as well does help the combo and then land an Underworld Breach. From there, your plan is basically just to chain uh, cantrips. This deck has 16 of them. Um, and um, basically, uh, there's various things you can do to increase the amount of cards in your graveyard, like Casting cantrips from your hand to fill up your graveyard for Underworld Breach, then once you hit a land, sculpting your hand with Faithless Looting or using Dragon Rage Channeler to uh, fill up your graveyard as well. And the win condition for this deck is uh, you just wish for um, any number of win cons, really. You've got Jace, Tender of Agony, or the most simple one, Grape Shot. All right, looks like we've got our opponent, and uh, I'll keep this hand. It's got. Um, Two of the three P's I need, Dragon Race Channel and Ornoy nice Steamkin. So this is a definitely excellent, an excellent hand to keep, and I even have a backup uh, Dragon Race. Oh, and there's a there's Breach. So potentially we can combo next turn. We're missing like a Strike at Rage, and we'll have to get lucky, but if my opponent doesn't play into Reaction, which it looks like they aren't. Yep. All right, so we're going to try to combo here. You generally just want to try to combo off as soon as possible. Um, with his deck, let's just, oh, I can't because of Stalin Ghost, so let's just check him on Steamkin. Not that it particularly matters, and I'm just going to try to chain cantrips here, and uh, if I fizzle out, I can try to go off next turn as well, but the reason I'm going off this turn is my opponent might play Interaction, they could two-drop a Rest in Peace potentially, which would make my life a lot harder, so uh, it is best just to uh, go over the combo as soon as possible. And that's, that's a good general rule for this deck. You know, if you can try to combo, you generally just want to go for it. I right, do need Bergy here. Again, we're just trying to hit Cantrips. Once we hit a Strike It Rich... Ooh, that's unfortunate. Um, I, yeah, that's just going to be the turn. Unfortunate. Uh, I could cast the Spike Field Hazard to go up a mana. Uh, but honestly... I don't even... Yeah, actually I am, just to, just to surveil, so I can uh, sort of guarantee uh, going off next turn. I don't need this Dragon Race channel. I really need a cantrip, hopefully, to get me started. Um, oh, and I can actually attack here as well for a bit of damage, which is good. You know, this deck um, uh, does have the backup plan of just beating down the creatures. You know, seven damage is not bad. And uh, we've got Delirium enabled here with um, instant land creature sorcery. Alright, there's nine lives. Yeah, that's not a problem, so hopefully we can just combo this turn. Yeah, so I'm just gonna start off by cantripping until I can't anymore, because if I draw things like a Dragon Raids Channeler or a, a Bergy, I could cast them just to make a combo faster, but I'm pretty close to just being deterministic here. As soon as I find a Faithless Looting, I can um, start enabling the loop and going positive on cards in the graveyard. Convert that into mana with Strike It Rich, and then uh, I'll be able to Grape Shot my opponent for enough. And worst comes to worst, had they had the um, Solemnity 9 lives, actually, there's a chance I should not have done that. Should not have cast a Strike It Rich just because I don't need to, I already have enough mana. But the reason I am casting it is um, I'm pretty much deterministically going to win here. So, um, casting the Strike It Rich just uh, speeds this up a little bit. And now, as soon as I find Wish, I win the game. Um, assuming Storm counts high enough, but even as in, I can um, cast Grape Shot and then flash it back. But I'm just going to cast another Dragon Rage Channeler. It's not necessary, but um, the reason I'm doing it is it's just going to help me loot through my deck faster. And now we're going to find my, oops, my Faithless Looting. Doesn't really matter what we exile here since we're just deterministic at that point. At this point, and I'm going to surveil both cards of the bin. One. Two, then draw two cards and discard two cards. Oh, three actually, because I have three heard uh, Dragon Race Channelers. Oh, there's my wish. 
So, see, I'll do this again just to show you. That's um, three cards into the graveyard off the Dragon Rage. Oops, I should probably take that off Steam. Kit. Might have been forgetting to do that, but it doesn't really matter at this point. There we go. So, three cards in the graveyard if I just surveil to the graveyard of the Dragon's Channel, which is just fine here to save time. Even though I could be scrying cantrips to the top and chaining them, but it's not necessary at this point. And then I also get to draw two and discard two. So this Faithless Looting put five cards in my graveyard, and I do not lose out on any mana at all. So I spent three three cards to put three cards to my graveyard. Um, and so, or uh, basically, I spent three cards to put five cards in my graveyard, so I'm up two cards in my graveyard. Now I can cast a Strike It Rich, um, and this increases the amount of mana I have because... It is both free and makes a treasure, so I net one mana every time I do this. And I can just keep surveilling into the graveyard, so I can uh, keep casting spells. And then, um, now that I'm high enough mana, I'm just going to cast this Wish. And I'm just going to surveil graveyard, graveyard, graveyard. Just to uh, keep the cards flowing. And there we go, take mana off Steamkin. Grape shot. So I'm going to grape shot my opponent for 10 here. And worst comes to worst, I can always just keep striking it rich to get up to enough mana to um, cast Wish, get Jace if they had the Solemnity 9 lives lock and I couldn't deal them damage. But um, seeing as that's not an issue. Oh, that actually is enough because of the 9 lives. Yep, so we get 9 counters on the 9 lives. And that is game. There we go. Nine lives gets exiled. Trigger goes in the stack, and our opponent loses. So that's a pretty example, pretty good example of how the, the games of the stack go when when they go right. You know, that was a that was a turn four kill, but it could have been a turn three kill if we had to strike it rich, because that would have given us an extra mana to then cast Underworld Breach, be able to cast another spell to start taking mana off Steamkin. That is one downside of Steamkin versus Bergy is sometimes you can have like the combo. But if you can't, um, if you don't have enough counters saved up on Runaway Steamkin, you can run out. Um, so, like, say you only have one counter on Steamkin. If it were a Bergy, that would be, like, one mana, and then you'd be able to keep comboing. But with Steamkin, you need to get up to three counters before you can take the mana off. So that is a, a thing to keep in mind. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, going to be it. Uh, thank you much, so much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed and continued to do the guide if you haven't. Finish feeding it and uh, yeah, good luck in your games.